Hi everyone, welcome back to a, another lesson. Uh, today we're going to go back to our um, uh, graphic design style of doing art. So I thought we would figure out how to do a photo collage. Um, many of you do have photographs that are kind of stored up on your computers. And uh, I thought maybe we can just um, use some of them to make possibly a photo collage of a trip or maybe what you did um, over the school year with some friends, um, any kind of a theme. So what I've decided to do is show you a couple different sites on how to make a photo collage and then use some pretty cool text. So there's going to be two different um, sites and I'm going to choose the um, trip that I went on a couple years ago when I went to Europe and we're going to make a photo collage. <clears throat> So the first thing I want you to notice here is uh, the two sites that I have set up. So I have set up and I'll give you the links on Google Classroom where you can apply um, these two into your Google or into your, um, yeah, into your Google search. So the first one is our main uh, work page, which is called photocollage.com. And another tab here, which is cooltext.com, which is a really cool site that I'm going to show you where you can pretty much use any kind of a, a funky text and even some animated texts uh, to put into any kind of a Word document or anything that you work in uh, graphically. So the very first thing I'm going to have you look at is in the photo collage site. Um, I have my page set up to 80%. But depending how large your screen is, I have it at 80% so I can see my entire workspace here, my canvas size. Because uh, if you notice here, if I put it to 100%, I have to scroll up and down to see everything. However, when you do shrink your page, <clears throat> unfortunately what happens as well is your taskbar gets a little bit smaller, but I pretty much know what I'm doing here. So. The very first thing you're going to do is when you come to the top left here, you're going to see collage and a drop down. So that little drop down, if you see here where it says set background, we're going to click on set background. Now this site is really cool because you've got so many different background options to choose from. So you can pick any of these here in the library. So they've got some really neat designs here. You can go to a gradient, you can go to a color. If you come here to Pixabay, you can type in something here. Um, so if I just type in the word vacation and search, it's going to give you some different images. But if you have an image that you want to use, you click on image, and then it says here, drag an image here or browse. So I already have down here set up some of my photos that I'm going to be using for my collage. And I thought maybe one of these images here would be cool as a background. So I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag it into this area here. Let go. And now I have my background already in place. In the bottom right here, oh, my photo is kind of probably covering but in the bottom right, you're going to see where it says apply. Here, let me just show you over here. Over here, it says apply. So you're just going to click on apply. And now your background wallpaper is set up. Um, if you want to see all of it in it, um, I did this earlier and it actually filled up the entire space, but, um, I can't remember now how to do that. Maybe in the canvas size, if you choose different canvas sizes, you can, uh, well, you can probably just experiment with that on your own time. Um, but right now this is pretty much good enough, even though I did want to see the whole image there. But if you don't like something, you can always come here and clear your canvas and then just start from scratch again. So if I come here and go uh, set background, if I come here to image, 
Let's see what another image will look like if I pick this one here. For the grade six students, you learned about Greece. So this is the Parthenon in Athens. When I click apply, see now that one fits in perfectly for the whole image. So I'll keep that one uh, going for this particular lesson. <clears throat> now, the next thing I want you to notice is we're going to start putting some text in here. Um, but here it says add text. Now you can add some text in here and, you know, play around with it if you, if you wish, but I'm not a big fan of the text that they have here, there. It's pretty generic. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to this site, which is called cooltext.com. And everything that you see here are examples of text that you can change and manipulate. But if you come down here, you'll see there's 128 of these. This is only one of 56. So if you click on this arrow here, it'll give you some other ones. So if I look through all of those and pick something that I like, like right here, you can see if you want to use this font here, like let's say you went on a trip to um, Universal Studios and you really like the Harry Potter exhibit. This is a really cool one here that's called Wizards. But seeing that I went to uh, Greece and Italy and saw a lot of ruins, if you see here, there's an old stone font. I'm going to click on that. Now the default will just show old stone. So what I'm going to do is just change that text to my European vacation. And then as soon as you type that in, it will change it in this space here. It'll take some time because it even had my spelling mistake. Now, what I like to do always is with the text size, I like to increase it because um, when you increase the text size, it just makes your um, resolution better. And that's just, that just means it's a better quality. So I'm going to put mine to 120 and you can see the example here it has it right there. Now you can come here and click on logo and change your text color. Um, even here where it says age, you can make it look older or younger um, or newer, but I'm just going to keep that size there. Shadow, you can change it. Just play around with it if you wish, but I kind of like the way it looks right there. So I'm going to click on create logo. As soon as you click on that, it's going to take some time. Taking a little bit longer than before. There we go. Just have to be patient. And there is our uh, logo. First thing you need to notice is that there's a download button. Don't right click and save as. Click on download. As soon as you click download, you're going to choose a spot to put it in. So you need to have some kind of a folder. I'm going to put it into a folder that I already made for the collage project. And I'm just going to call this um, text one. You can call it whatever you want so that you can remember where what it is. And we're going to save it. Now, if you go to see where you saved it, if you just go to it, you'll see that it's right here and it's ready to input whenever you want. So the very first thing I'm going to do is, after I have that saved, is come back to my uh, canvas and we're going to insert that text. So right next to collage, you'll see add images. Well, that text that we made is kind of like an image. So I'm gonna click on add image and I'm going to go to my folder where I saved it and I'm going to input it in here. Now the very first, or what I want you to notice here is um, it has kind of a white border. Well, we don't want that white border in there. If you like it, you can keep it. But if you double click now on that, you'll see here, you have something called border and you'll see something here that says blur edge. 
if you play around with this, you'll see that like that white border gets bigger or it gets smaller until the point where it just disappears. I don't want any of that white border on there. Now, blurring the edge is kind of a neat feature. If you put here, it kind of creates a bit of a black background and it just blurs the edge until it actually disappears. So you can play around with where you want it. If you don't want any, just have it at zero. But I kind of like it somewhere around here where it almost looks like there's a shadow. Click on close. Now we can start figuring out where we want to put this. Now this may change as you're working with your uh, collage. But one thing I always like to do is if you look here at the taskbar, there's always something when you're working with um, graphic design, when you're making posters or whatever, where you need to see a grid. So if you click on that thing that looks like a, like a, um, like a grid, um, like a bunch of squares, you can click on 25 by 25 where you see a whole bunch of squares like that, 50 by 50, there's bigger squares, or 75 by 75. The purpose of that is so that when you move your images and text around, you can see it's more centered. So if you see here, there's like a whole square there. You wanna make it about a square over there. And then when you're done, you can come here and just shut it off. So I'm just gonna take this little thing here. I'm just gonna pivot it a bit. Or maybe I can make it go along the line of the top of the Parthenon, that might be neat. I actually put it in here so we can pivot it. So it looks like that. <clears throat> Click away. And now it is in your um, collage already. Now, my European vacation is one part of the text. If I want to put another style of text in there, I'm going to come over here to my text and I'm just going to go back to all of my different examples and I'm going to pick another style by the way don't pick a gif which means an animated one because when you put it in your photo uh, collage it won't uh, be animated so I'm going to maybe pick this dragon style here I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to sorry just give me a minute here um, I'm going to give it like another text at the bottom. So a European vacation. Uh, I might maybe put the year of it. So I can put um, summer of 2019. And then you can see it's got the text changed up here. So once again, you can change... Um, these things. Now, what you notice in image, always make sure that your text has a transparency. That's just a big fancy word, which means you don't have a background. So if you click on this arrow, you can see there is some examples without, but we're going to keep it as transparent. So I'm going to click on create logo. And that logo is created. I'm going to click on download. And then I'll just call this uh, text two and save it. Now, when I go back to my collage, I'm going to add image text two, open it. And here is our next text with once again, that white border. So double click on that, bring down the border all the way down to there. If you want to do that blurred edge thing, you can do that. I think in this case, I'm not going to have any of that edge. Click close and place that. And you can make this as big as you want. You can play around with the pivot if you want. I'm just going to keep that straight and maybe put it down here. Click on my grid to see the size and the placement of it. I'll put it maybe right here, click away, get rid of my grid. And now I have my text with my background. Well, it is a photo collage, so let's start putting in some photos. So if I come back here to add image, 
I can start adding some images or if you already have your photo set up, you can just click and drag it. So if I want to put this one in here, you can just click, drag it into your um, background. So this is where you have to start um, changing the size of it, changing uh, the, the, uh, the orientation of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, first thing I'm going to drag the corner and bring it down to size. If I want to bring it in a little bit like this, I can bring it to whatever size we want. If I double click on it, I can get rid of my border if I wish. I can increase the border. What I was like with these ones is make it look more like a photograph. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a border, like maybe at two or three. Come here to the blur edge. You can blur that edge a little bit. And then you can place it. Just play, click close. You can place it however you want. You can pivot it, move it around. Now what I do want you to notice, I'll do be putting a few photos in here. But if you bring it here, you'll notice it covers the text. So if I want that to be behind the text, up here, you'll see that there is a, um, a little drop down. Actually, let me just increase my screen here so you can see it bigger. Let's bring it up to here. So if you notice, this is the main taskbar, but on the photo, there's a little drop down taskbar. So here, you'll notice this little square here, and then this little square here. This means your text or your photo is in the front of everything. This means it's behind everything. So if I click on this now, it'll send it backwards. And you'll notice it became a text behind something. So that is very important as you move things around on your collage. So let me just bring it back to this size again. And now I can take my photo and you can see it's all hidden behind the text. But I'm going to start putting my photos starting in the top left, click away, and my first photo is in there. So I'm just going to continue moving around um, my collage by putting in different photos, different sizes. Double click, bring this down to about a three. Take my blurred edge, increase a little bit. Click close. I want this behind the text. So I'm going to click send it backwards. And I'm going to maybe put it right there. Put in some more photos. Bring my border down to three again, increase the blur edge. Put it behind. Put that one up here. Maybe pivot this one a bit. Yeah, maybe like that. You can also put your photos in front of one another. There again, you can play around with it and have some fun. Just doing this quickly. Let's put that one right there. Manipulate my border and my blurred edge. Close it. Put it behind. One looks pretty good right there. This is when I was at uh, Olympia in Greece, which was the place for the first Olympics ever took place. And this is where they had their, their uh, marathon or their, their running races. And that was the starting point.
So double click, change the border, crease the blurred edge. Now this one here, if we want to put this, let's say over top another photograph, we can maybe put it like that. But there again, if you want it behind it, you come here and send it backwards. And it goes behind it, but I actually like it in front of it. So I'll put it there. Let's get some photos without me in it. So let's maybe put this one here. This is from a Greek island called Santorini. These cool little church steeples on the side of a cliff. So maybe put that one right there. And we'll maybe pivot this one a little bit. We want to put this behind this text. Let's send it backwards. And let's maybe put, got to put the Colosseum in there somewhere. So this is in Rome. Bring it to size. Maybe we'll put it right. And here, we pivot it like that. Double click on it. Bring down the border. Blurred edge. And send it behind the text. Now what you need to do always is just kind of look at the placement of your, your photographs and your images to make sure that there's like there's a nice balance between everything. If you want to ever change anything, you can click on this. Like, let's say you don't really like that black part in there, which I don't know if I'm a fan of right now. I'm just going to get rid of it so I can change it. And it does look a bit small too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of it. So I'm going to maybe bring it a little bit bigger. Still keep it at that angle and yeah, maybe place it like that. And as you can see, um, this is pretty much finished unless you want, like I might want to put another photo there, but that is it. Now, once you are done with everything, we need to be able to save this and have some good quality. So let me just increase this screen up a little bit. So in the top um, taskbar, when you click on collage here, the top left, you will see there's save as image, save as image, save, share online, print, blah, blah, blah. Now, what I always like to do is save as an HD, which means it is going to be your best quality. Save it as a name. So my Euro trip collage. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG or PNG, but I'm just going to do it as a JPEG. I'm going to click save. Now, as soon as that happens, you'll see this bar going across. That means it's just making it ready to download. So as soon as that is done, this will light up. You click on download, choose a place where you want to save it. So I already have an example there, but I'm just going to call it my Euro trip collage, save it. And then when you're done, you can go to the place that you saved it and have a look at what it looks like completed. So now we have a pretty darn good quality photo collage with your text and your photos. I did do another example when I was trying it out. So here's another one. And once again, you will find the links um, on Google Classroom and you can have some fun making a photo collage. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson on more graphic design and I will see you guys soon. Bye.